long time, and I really apologize for that. My computer has not been working. I have not been able to uh, upload any videos. Um, and I'm hoping that it works for this. I think I've got everything going okay. And I hope from now on I can keep you guys updated on the rest of the pregnancy in a timely manner. We'll see. <laughs> um, the last time I actually did a pregnancy update was a freaking long time ago. And I think that I was, uh, you know what, I, I haven't looked at my videos. I think I was like 21, 22 weeks, something like that. The last time I did an actual pregnancy update, um, which was like 10 weeks ago because I'm going to be 33 weeks in two days. Um, so yeah that was a really really long time ago and I am so sorry um, there was just nothing I could do about it so what I'm gonna do is try to give you a very quick update of all these last few weeks so you guys can kind of you know just know what's been going on with me and the pregnancy um, over the last many weeks like 10 weeks or something like that um, and it's been a lot. Oh my god. A, a lot. Um, I'm gonna go back to right about the time that I was I had to end up stopping the videos because the computer wasn't working. At that time I was still working um, and for those of you who watched me you know that the job that I had was at night. I bartended because that way I wouldn't have to worry about actually um, being gone during the day we wouldn't have to worry about daycare expenses and things like that. I could be home with my son during the day and then Tony would be home and then I could go to work at night and that was just a really financially good way to do things. So that's what I was doing. Um, and I felt really lucky because this is the only like normal healthy pregnancy I've ever had and I felt extremely lucky that I was able to keep working. Um, one thing that was in the back of my mind though that I was a little concerned about was even though I am so much more healthy this go round and this is the the most normal pregnancy I've ever had there is one thing that I was thinking about that may hinder this the farther I got along that no matter how healthy I am I can't change and what that is is um, I had a surgery back when I was 20, 21, I don't even remember, 21, I think. Um, and with all the girly issues I had back then, I ended up having to have a third of my cervix removed. You know, with everything I know now, it probably wouldn't happen that way, but back then, that's the way we handled it. And so back then, I had a third of my cervix removed, and I was told that I would not be able to carry a baby to term without possibly a cerclage or something like that. So it wasn't that the pregnancy wouldn't be a good pregnancy, it was the cervix that wouldn't really be able to hold a full term baby in. Now with Camden, that never really became an issue because I was on bed rest almost the whole darn time with him. And no, it wasn't like a strict bed rest again with him. Um, it was a, you know, keep your butt at home, take it easy kind of a thing. Um, so, you know, I was still able to be somewhat active with his pregnancy, um, but I, I definitely kept it easy. And so the cervix never became an issue with his pregnancy. This one, because I was very active, was working all the time, and the, the job that I was doing was very busy, very you know, very physical and just everything, um, I was concerned. And as it turns out, rightly so. Because right about uh, 21, 22, 23 weeks, something like that, I started no noticing that I was having um, quite a lot of Braxton Hicks. I described them as Braxton Hicks contractions um, because they weren't painful by any means just uncomfortable but not painful but I was having a lot of them a lot and it would happen a lot when I was at work and um, 
And so they really started to kind of keep an eye on me and stuff like that. And they did find that my cervix was starting to shorten. And so they ended up doing, I'm trying to kind of condense this all very quickly. There's a lot more to it than this, but I'm trying to say it quickly. Um, they ended up doing, wanting to do like a, a weekly or, or, or bi-weekly um, fetal fibronectin test if I were to keep working um, because they just wanted to make sure. They're like, well, you know, your cervix is shortening. We really don't want you to be working. They actually did take me out of work and put me on bed rest for a short amount of time. And by the way, uh, for those of you, because I had, I had an issue with, um, someone that I know that didn't quite understand the whole bed rest thing. There's different forms of bed rest. <laughs> um, when someone says bed rest, it doesn't always mean that they are on strict bed rest and they can't get out of bed. Uh, according to, you know, my midwife, my, and the way they wanted me to handle things, it was like a modified bed rest where it was very similar to my son, where you don't work, you keep your butt at home, for the most part. Um, and you take it easy. Now that does not mean with the type of bed rest that I was on that I couldn't leave the house at all. Um, she absolutely told me that if I wanted to go to a movie or if I wanted to go drive somewhere or if I wanted to be, if I wanted to go out to eat or something like that, be, you know, to do that every now and then, that was totally fine because I wasn't super active and I was, you know, sitting and, and taking it easy and whatever and um, I had a little bit of an issue with someone that I know because they thought that, um, that my version of the, the bed rest that I was put on meant that I was not supposed to get out of bed at all. Not the case. <laughs> um, I followed my midwife's instructions to the letter. She told me that I did just fine with that. Um, anyway, I won't go into that. So, um, I was put on a modified bed rest for a while and things did improve um, when I was not working. They did the, the fetal fibronectin. What that is, is it's testing for the fibronectin, the fibers. It's like the glue that holds the sac and the baby and everything kind of in, uh, at, at, like attaching it to the, the, the uterus, I guess. And um, as you get ready, excuse me, as you get ready to go into labor, your body, about a week or two prior to that happening, will start to kind of slough off that glue into the canal. And if they swab for that and they see that, that that's positive, that you actually have some of that sloughing off, there's a fairly good chance that that means that you are getting ready to go into labor. So they would swab for that test to make sure that that was not happening, which thank God it wasn't. Because back then I was like 24, 25, 26 weeks, something like that, when all this was happening. That wouldn't have been good at all. So um, anyway, long story short, um, we kind of went back and forth, back and forth. I tried to work a little bit and I was having issues when I was at work and they felt it was best and then of course I felt it was best that I just leave work. Financially, no, that was not an easy decision, um, but it was a necessary one because I needed to be able to not be that active. Again, no matter how healthy I am now, you know, um, I can't change the fact that my cervix is physically different now because of the surgery than it used to be. And as the baby's bigger and I'm, I'm in the weight and everything on it, nothing I can do about that. So the baby, the pregnancy is totally fine. It was just a cervix issue. And now that I'm no longer working, it is totally fine. Like everything is perfect, wonderful. I've been um, taking it easy, yes, but... I kind of listen to my body and I know um, and so I'm still able to get plenty of stuff done and and things have been amazing things have been awesome um, so yeah I mean things have totally calmed down holidays were awesome just everything was good 
So baby has been just moving around and just awesome. So my last doctor's, well, I should say midwife visit um, went perfect. That was just like last week was my last one. My blood pressure, she's just really, really impressed with how my health is now. God, my hair is just... She's really impressed with that. Um, she, she she comments to me all the time when I go in there just how um, happy and healthy I look and how she's just so impressed with how things are going with this. My blood pressure was really, really just like, it was like 90 something over or something, I don't even remember, but she goes, wow, you are so relaxed right now. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, I had my gestational diabetes test, which my pregnancy with Cam, the first one I failed, so I had to take the three hour one. I did pass that one, although it was um, not by a whole lot, but I ended up passing that with him. But with this pregnancy, I passed with flying colors. They're like, perfect, 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 perfect. Um, whenever they test my urine, all of that, when it comes to all the different things they test for, they're looking for protein and blah, blah, blah. Um, perfect. Everything has been awesome. I've had zero swelling. Um, it's, everything's good. Her, she is head down. Um, which is, I hope she stays that way. <laughs> she does flip from side to side. So her, and you can't really see, but... You know, obviously her butt and feet are, are, well actually today, her feet are over on this side. Butt's up here, feet are on this side. Um, she will flip from side to side, but her head does stay down, and I hope that it stays that way. So one day I'll have kicking over on this side, the next day I'll have kicking over on this side, but it just kind of shifts like that. She stays head down. Um, she is very high. Oh like all the way up in my my lungs um, I'm extremely out of breath a lot I don't really remember being quite this uh, out of breath with with Camden he just seemed to be a little lower or something um, with her I'm just very out of breath I feel much much more uncomfortable with this one than I did with him um, you know, my skin and just everything is, is more uncomfortable. And it could be that I'm a little bit older. It could, I don't know, it's only a few years. But um, I think another factor maybe would be the fact that it's winter time right now um, versus when I was this far along with Cam, it was summertime. So with winter time, you know, the air is so dry and just everything, even though I'm lotioning up and blah, blah, blah. Um, I just think that the, maybe the winter has kind of an effect on it, how uncomfortable my skin is and just how tight everything feels. Um, I just feel very, very uncomfortable. Um, but it's really, really, really hard for me to sleep at night. Um, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I've got to have pillows on both sides and I can't be on one side for very long because my hip starts to, at first, it just starts to get real sore. And then if I lay on it too long, it's almost like that nerve pain it gets almost like a, a shooting hot pain if I lay on that side too long. So I'm constantly flipping back and forth. I'm constantly peeing at night, so I'm just not getting really good sleep anymore, which sucks. I'm probably up. I would say three to five times a night um, just going to the bathroom and more than that even just flipping so I'm just constantly waking up flipping just whatever which kind of sucks but oh well you know I, this is third trimester so a lot of women have difficulty with sleeping these last few weeks anyway which you know it kind of sucks because this is a time where you need to kind of rest up for the baby <laughs> and that's not happening <laughs> oh well um let's see i am uh, i'm starting to plan a lot more when it comes to the actual birth um the birth center that i have chosen i'm excited about 
I'm excited about the fact that my midwife is the same midwife that I had with my son. Um, she's just no longer at the location that I was when I had my son. That was only a half an hour away. Well now, where I'm going is like an, almost an hour and a half. It's about an hour and 20 minutes. And that's in good weather. <laughs> That's when the roads are nice and clean and clear and sunshiny and blah blah blah. That's almost about an hour and a, hour and 20 minutes. So it's winter time here and I'm really really nervous because she's due March 6th. Um, we think that she's more than likely going to come early so more than likely it's going to be um, like the last part of February. That's what I suspect. Um, and with where we live it, I mean, that's a perfect time of year for big ol' snowstorms. Yay. So I'm just, I'm nervous because I don't want to be right in the middle of a big snowstorm or have ice all over the roads or something like that. And then I go into labor and we have a minimum hour and a half drive, if not potentially more if the weather is bad. And with second baby and labor potentially going faster, I'm a little nervous about that. Uh, but I'm just going to keep my, my positive thoughts going and, and I'm just going to keep thinking that this is going to be an awesome birth, which I really think that it's going to be. Um, this birth center I'm just freaking excited about. It's, I think they opened about five years ago, something like that. Um, all the amenities you could possibly want, you know, for a birth center. And, um... It's just, I mean, they have a masseuse on site and everything. So I'm just, I'm really, really, really excited about this birth and about having a good, positive experience. And I just hope that we're able to make it there in plenty of time and I can have that relaxing experience, you know, whatever, however it may happen. But I just want it to happen there. <laughs> so anyway, um... That's 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 how that's what I'm kind of nervous about when it comes to the birth. Um, this go round, I am going to be doing things differently. I'm doing placenta encapsulation. I've learned quite a bit about that. For those of you who don't know much about that, I'm not going to go into it right now. It'll make the video too long. Look it up. Um, you know, some of you may find it gross. Some of you may find it appealing whatever. Um, I personally, from the studying that I've done, I think it's kind of, it's almost a common sense thing. It could help with, you know, healing and milk supply and the baby blues and all that stuff. So I'm excited to try that. The lady that is actually going to be doing it for me um, is really, really, really well known in this field. Very well known. So I'm just stoked to have her doing it. But the plus side is that I'm even considering being her student and learning how to do this myself so I can provide the service for other people. I haven't decided for sure if I'm going to do that. Um, it's a possibility. I just kind of want to see how things go. Um, but I do know that she had agreed to it. Um, so that's a possibility. I might at some point be providing that service, you know, just on a part-time basis or whatever, just for something to do. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. Well, that's, I'm considering that. Up until these last few, like several weeks, I haven't had any new cravings or aversions up until recently anyway. Um, I would say probably just in the last couple weeks, I'm starting to have some cravings that ha I, are actually coming back now that were s the same that, um, when I had Cam. When I was pregnant with him, um, I found that I was craving ice a lot and I was craving lemon scented things. If you guys have watched my old uh, pregnancy videos, I had this weird like craving when I was pregnant with him and, and again, I'm, I'm getting it now again. Um, ice, now I know that can be an iron thing. With him, I think that it was an iron thing because my ice obsession, I mean, it was like a constant. I just always, always had to be chewing on ice. Um, 
It's different this time. It's not that I have to be chewing on ice, so I don't really think it's an iron issue because I'm my nutrition is way, way up there this time. Now what it is, is I just like to have the cold in my mouth and I'm chewing. It's not, it's, it's a different, I'm wanting the ice for a different reason this time, for whatever reason, I don't know, anyway. But then I'm also getting back into this lemon thing where the smell of lemon or citrus stuff is like, <gasps> Just, I, oh my god, I can't get enough of it. Like, oh, I'm like, I just, right now, I want to go just sniff my dishwasher detergent right now. <laughs> because, just talking about it, I don't know what the deal is. I was like this with Camden the last several weeks, and now I'm like this again with this one. And actually, I'm going to show you this. This is a cleaner that I use by Melaleuca. Um... I use a lot of Melaleuca products in my house. I just love Melaleuca cleaning, like household products. Love it. Um, you're not dealing with the chemicals and all that stuff, but they're all like natural based stuff. So anyway, this is my um, new obsession. <laughs> and I'm totally embarrassed by it. It's a really, really good household cleaner, but I use it all the time now just because I like the smell of it. It's Solumel, <laughs> and it has like a lemony citrus scent, and it is so freaking just fresh, and I can't even explain it, but it makes me want to clean constantly just so I can smell it. <laughs> yes, I know, it's weird. It's totally weird. Um, this stuff is really, really good stuff, by the way. It's really good stuff, but it smells freaking amazing. Oh my god. So anyway, I don't know what my deal is with the lemon citrus smell. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's absolutely hilarious, but that's the deal. Um, what else? Skin. I have complained about my skin this entire pregnancy, but you know what? Over the last, like, ten weeks, my skin has cleared up. It's just, I mean, my skin is probably the best it's been in years. And to be honest, what I think a big part of that is, is, you know, over this last year, I have transitioned what I use on my skin so much. Um, but I think that it takes your body kind of a long time to, sometimes it almost has to get worse before it gets better as you make changes as toxins are coming out, kind of a thing. And I used to use products that you know, were not good, that had toxins in them. So as I stopped using that stuff and I'm using the more natural stuff, toxins are coming out. You know, it takes a long time to get that crap out of your skin. And I think that that's why I was still having so many issues with my skin. Um, but now it's been such a long time since I've been using the more natural products. And I'm noticing such a huge change finally in my skin. I mean, it's just like, it's soft and, and for the most part, pretty darn clear. And so, I mean, I, I really don't have to wear much makeup at all anymore. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I hope that it stays that way. Purchases, we are pretty much set. Um, we purchased the crib. I'm doing, uh, I'm, I got an Arms Reach Co Sleeper crib that like attaches to our bed. Um, I'm just doing things a lot differently this time with this baby than I did with him. Um, you know, I don't want her to be in, her, in a separate room. And we had so many issues with him and his separate room and us constantly getting up and blah, blah, blah. Um, this time I'm gonna keep her right next to me and just, I'll be the one, I'll be breastfeeding. So I'll be the one feeding her at night um, and it would just be so much easier if I could just go bloop, not have to get out of bed, you know. So we got that and pretty much everything else as far as, you know, clothing and all the other baby needs, whatever um, we didn't already have from Camden, we've pretty much um, purchased for her or else we've gotten those as gifts. 
There's only a couple more things that we really need to get before she's here. Um, and I'm just not real concerned. It's so funny how the difference between your first and your second child, how much more like relaxed you are and how you just kind of know that you don't need to freak out and you don't need to have all this stuff. I mean, we're not going to have all this stuff for her like I did with him. I don't need it. I don't want it. Um, I'm just way, way, way more relaxed with this. So that's cool. I will do a belly shot. Um, I'll have to go take the camera over there and do it. Sorry, this video is really pretty long, but you know, it's, I tried to kind of sum everything up. Um, and I will, I really, really hope that this will upload. God, I hope so. Um, and I will do my best to keep you guys updated from this point on, pending my computer lets me. Okay guys, so here is my almost 33 week belly. It's like 32 and a half weeks. Um, from the front, from the side. Oh, it's blurry. I don't know why it's getting all blurry. Darn thing. And I will have a, because this line on my pants right here, I'm going to have a line on my belly probably from it, but there's that. There's that. Definitely is big time popping out now, for sure. Oh, for sure. Um, my belly button, my belly button is not popping out, but my belly is popping out like crazy. Oh my gosh, yeah, you can see all the marks from my pants. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, she's right today. She's head down, um, backs over here, butts here, and her feet and everything are on this side from the way I kind of feel it. But so that's the belly. I have gained up to this point about 14 pounds with cam total pregnancy I gained 19 so I'm pretty much kind of like right on the same track as I was with him still I don't have any stretch marks whatsoever at all I, have, I don't have any like skin marks from this pregnancy the only thing that I have been um, suffering with with this pregnancy big time is my varicose veins in my legs um, which really, really sucks, but, um, anyway, so that's the belly. See y'all later. Bye.